Hello everyone, back to another version of Method Digest where I will try and walk through the newest patch we've seen and how it's going to impact the meta. The meta hasn't settled so far, it probably will settle during the next week or two or so. Uh, we'll see maybe new builds pop up or we'll see all bitch, bitch, <laughs> all bitch, all bitch, all builds uh, flourish <laughs> and do uh, well. So likely there'll be an update in a few weeks uh, and I'll do another version of this, but I wanted to get a video out talking about the current patch changes, how it's going to affect the meta and what you should be looking forward to. All right, we'll start by walking through the patches because there's been quite a few patches over the past uh, week or so. And finally, Drodo has made some great, 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 great changes, killing off some of the god awful builds we've seen throughout the past two months. So yeah, let's get into it. So the first patch they released a week ago was called Lucid Nightmare. I'll walk through the changes. So first of all, they added a bar of economic results to show players, allowing a clear view of uh, lineup value on the right side player detail panel at the end game panel. There'll be two bars. The top one has like a number attached to it. I think they actually both have. So you can see how much gold a, a specific board is worth. And then there's a bar underneath that shows the total economic value the player has. So how much gold the, they got in total. This allows you to see, well, why someone might be stronger than you. Maybe their board is more expensive. And also you can see how some boards can do quite a lot with very little gold. For example, Goblin Drainer. It's a nice small UI change. It doesn't matter too much, but it's nice to look at. Then they've added Bane, say to a Warlock. Active skill activates on full mana. Casting spell. This is Fiend script, by the way. Grabs a random chess piece. Yes, this is completely random right now. I've had Bane use Fiend script on CM2 and Dark Willow 1. So I'm not super convinced about this unit so far. Rendering it unable to act and dealing pure damage over time. Victim of Atrophus often suffer excruciating agony from the vivid illusions in the nightmares. Kind of a weird unit right now. It's not often that you want to play... Like, there's not that many builds that use Warlocks that aggressively. And the majority of the builds where we do see Warlocks, they utilize, for example, Alchemist, because he's an Ogre Warlock, right? And he can fight. Or they utilize Venomancer because Venomancer is a beast as well. Or you might have Shadowfiend who has insane damage. Or Enigma because Enigma is uh, an elemental, right? So having a Warlock that is a Satyr, the Satyr synergy doesn't really f fit that well together right now, I think, because you have one that's an Assassin, another that's a Warlock. We don't really do Assassin Warlock builds. Maybe we could, but... Bane hasn't quite found his place uh, yet, but an interesting tier one unit, I would say. Try it out if you want. Kind of hard to figure out how Bane is going to fit into the game, but maybe, maybe we'll see more Satyr pieces added to the game at some point, or maybe Bane will become stronger or something. But an interesting piece, uh, nonetheless. Warlocks have been nerfed consistently over the past year, so also Warlocks, uh, like playing a Warlock, like a build centered around warlocks is just not that good currently, but maybe maybe it's maybe it's becoming better. Clinks downgraded from two cost to one cost. This is pretty nice, honestly. Clinks is pretty fucking strong, honestly. And if you get uh, Clinks a uh, three star, he actually does a decent amount of work. So I can recommend trying out Clinks if you get cap. Ventral Spirit upgraded from one cost to two cost makes it quite harder to find uh, Venge. Because Venge has to contest with Putch and Abaddon, and also getting Venge upgraded. Good change, nerfs Venge, a Lion builds, and Dina builds. Mars buff from 600 health to 700 health. Good change makes Mars stronger. This means Mars 3 star has 400 additional health. That's quite a lot. Mars 2 star has 200 additional health. Also quite a lot. A Tusk buff as well. Cooldown reduced by one second on every single tier. Both of these things are pretty good buffs to Shrink Warriors. So if you don't play Shrink Warriors, I can recommend trying it out. Like the changes we've seen in the patches actually make Shrink Warriors look quite a lot stronger. Hex duration from 4.56 to 4.57. 
not the biggest thing. Cooldown reduced slightly on the first two levels from 8 to 6 to 5. I mean, Shadow Shaman is not seeing play ever, so maybe we'll see builds where Shadow Shaman is included a little bit. I do play him in Luna Trolls, and it's good, but yeah, maybe there's something else you could do with Shadow Shaman. Maybe some weird guard build, but maybe if you play like I don't kind of guard RP, but it sounds really dubious, I think. Yeah. Dina, magic damage reduced 500-750 to 1250 to 500-750 to 1000. Dolina 3 star. But then they also reduced the cooldown on all levels. So, I nerfed Dolina. Um, whether or not it's a good enough nerf, we'll see. I th still think Lina builds is going to be decently popular, but with also nerfing Cap and nerfing Venge, it does change uh, how you could play Lina. Also a bottle nerf, uh, which you'll see later on. Pudge buff, fine. Abaddon buff, fine. Husker buff also leads into the strength of uh, warriors and potential troll build. Ricky added effect hides own position during preparation phase. Formerly the one effect. Yes. So they added Bane as a Satyr, and Satyr one is no longer a synergy. This means that you can play Ricky in three wizard builds. So you can play Ricky in nine elf. You can play Ricky in nine mages. You can play Ricky in six trolls. Like all of those pretty wonky builds with three wizards. You can now add Ricky, which is pretty crazy. Also in faces, you can add Ricky, which is also pretty crazy. Muerta buff, Drow buff, and Dying buff. I don't care too much about the other buffs, but they're stronger. Lion damage has been changed as well. 500, 750, 1250 to, yeah, also losing 1250 and also less damage per stack. The demon build is slightly weaker. You should still be able to play it, but this is a good change, like bringing him back uh, a little bit. Ditch buff. No one's going to be playing Lich and a nerf on Necrophile. So these are these are good changes. These are a good start of change. These are not enough changes, but there's been another patch. So I'll show you that. Reworked racial synergy. Satyr fear. So the way it works now is that when a Satyr piece is surrounded by more than one enemy, they will do an AOE fear on the surrounding enemies. They can do this every 6 to 10 seconds, as you see here. And it's quite strong. The issue is, when do you play two Satyr? In which builds do you want to sacrifice a slot to play two Satyrs? I think in Three Cost Sin, which is a build we don't see anymore. I think in Three Cost Sin, adding Bane after you get your Sins up should be really fucking good. It might even be better than adding Torrin. Like, I guess that's like up to debate, but, but the fear is pretty good. I really want to try uh, to do race card on PA and make PA a Satyr in three cost sins. So you have Ricky Satyr and PA Satyr and you drop, you jump each corner like with one. It'd be really fucking strong, honestly. I haven't really seen this build do much yet. I've tried some different builds with Bane. I've tried Shrink Warriors with Bane and Satyr. It's kind of sketch, but yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. It's interesting to have a new synergy. It's also a it's also an interesting synergy, but it it's kind of hard to fit the two pieces in a single build right now. I think. The Kia nerf, this was the wrong kind of nerf. Nine elf nerf, this was also the wrong wrong kind of. We'll get back to Akira and Nine Elf because they changed them in better ways later on. Bottle is now tier two from tier one. It's crazy. It gives fifty mana rather than thirty. This means that bottle on warlocks is almost insta cast no matter what. It also means that getting bottle is a lot harder, which does nerf. A huge variety of builds because builds that relied on, on bottle were the po sf it was goblin drain i like bottle on tinker also really strong lena lion builds bottle really good two cost warrior guards bottle on what's he called on the oracle really strong this does nerf a huge amount of builds and we'll have to see in the future what nerfing bottle of this that way actually did but Interesting change, interesting change for sure. This is going to be something that really moves the game. We are not sure yet how, but it will change the game for sure. 
the change we saw to bottle and bassy back in January definitely had a huge impact in the game and in which items you pick. Bullet from tier two to tier one. It's pretty nice. This is pretty nice. Bullet was a pretty trash tier two. Now it's actually worth picking because you can also reroll it for free later on, right? Really, really good on Lone Druid, on Beastmaster, on Lycan, on Warlock. Yes, probably also still still decent on Venomance or some shit. But yeah, Bullwhip's nice now. I think that uh, distance decreased. I'll come back to this. They reverted this change. Minister Hound now immune to Mana Break. It should always have been, but some kind of bug. It's funny that they say now immune to Mana Break rather than acknowledging that it should never have. But okay. Attack speed bonus increased from 20% to 30%. Good butterfly was trash. One second less cooldown on Abyssal Blade. That's good. Slight nerf to Scythe with five seconds more cooldown. It's also really good. Scythe is still strong, but this does make, mean you maybe get one cast less during a long battle. And then a slight buff to Daedalus. Good changes. Curious Skiro effect rework. Grant loot tokens when the relic disappears, with token levels determined by the highest reward competition during the holding period. The re remove the restriction of not being able to obtain level 3 tokens before around 25. The win loss streak will additionally earn 1 gold, and when the relic disappears, you will receive a corresponding level loot token on the highest reward competition held during that time. I'm not sure if I consider this a buff or a nerf to the relic. Because the issue with the relic now is that the payout of the relic comes 10 rounds after you pick it. This is maybe fine if you get it on 10 and you keep your streak. But this means that if you pick your Skuro on 20, you won't get an item before 30. Really fucking trash. If you pick your Skuro on 30, you're not getting a fucking item before 40. I do think, honestly, the relic is even more dog shit now than it was before, which is crazy because at least before this, you could somehow, sometimes you could pick it on 20 and you could get like a tier 2 early or some shit like that, and that could have an impact. But now, get the item so late. It's good that they're trying things out with the relic, but I'm not sure that this is the effect, like this is the change we need. Master key, if this relic is chosen after a race class has already been dismissed, the gold will be refunded. This is a good change. Like, this is just a buff to key. This key needed the buff. And then they fixed some buffs, some bugs. And I just want to say that they did not fix this bug. Fixed a bug where the ringmaster obtained from the golden heart of the machine could not gain druid effects. I played a golden roll game yesterday or the day before yesterday where this did not work. So this bug is still in the game. Just so you know, you're playing ringmaster druid from golden rolls. Because I waited, I wasted an IO on it. Either way, overall, this was the start of a good patch, but this was not actually a great patch. Like there were a lot of things that were still huge issues after after this, specifically a Kiran dead and Iron Elf. But they released another balance update, which I will cover uh, right now. The first change that they made was on the twenty fifth. This was after the twenty fourth. That makes sense that the twenty fifth is after the twenty fourth, where they nerfed Ricky actually. I think this is a pretty huge nerf, so that's why I'm going to read it, even though it's a really small thing, but this is pretty fucking important, and I want you guys to think about which builds are Ricky good against, and which builds are we going to see become stronger because of this change. Because Ricky is a super strong counter to a lot of builds in the game, right? But with this change, he actually becomes significantly weak. So duration decreased from 3, 4, and 5 seconds to 2, 3, and 4 seconds. That is crazy. That's a 50% nerf on a Ricky 1. That's so much. That's insane. And also 50 radius decrease on everything, which also means you need to be even more like specific with your Ricky placement. This is going to change the meta because Ricky being good and Ricky being playable is what contains stuff like dragons and shamans. Ricky was too strong, and he was played in a lot of strong builds, but this is a pretty crazy change. This is a pretty crazy change. Now we come to the patch that they released the day before yesterday. Great fucking patch. This is actually the start, because we have a lot of patches to go through here. So, first, a warrior buff. Six warriors plus 12 instead of plus 11. Remember that when warriors are below 50% HP, 
they get double of their buff. So it's a plus one armor buff, but if a warrior is below 50% HP, it's a plus two armor buff. This is significant. It's like you have to remember this when you look at uh, synergies and buffs to synergies. Plus one is more than just plus one. It's plus one, but it's also plus two. They also buffed the reflection to, uh, multiplier of nine warriors from 1.5 to 1.7. Also huge. Drink warriors is going to be really fucking strong, I think. I can recommend trying to play it if you haven't. It's still going to struggle against Goblin Draenei, and it's still going to struggle against like more mage boards. But I think you can learn how to play against those boards if you itemize well and if you get to the late game. Hunters. Aim shot. Hunter's chance increased from 60% to 70%. I'm not sure if this is a bug, like mistake, or if they wanted to write percent here if this means something, but I imagine it's just a 10% increase for six hunters. And also, additional damage and knockback increased from 50 magical to 100 physical. This also means that now uh, nine hunters actually work with Orb of Corrosion and Desolator, which is pretty good. So it's, it's a buff in two ways. Yeah, we're going to see hunters become a lot stronger. Terrorblade uh, 9 Hunters with Wizards is going to be really good. You can also play Ricky in it now. Great changes. Hunters are going to be a menace moving forward. Divine Shield. <laughs> uh, knight chances for Protection Shield increase from 20 to 30%. This also buffs Knights. Whether Knight is going to be something we see played as a main synergy or whether this is just like as a mid-game timing pushing lineup thing, I don't know. But this is a good change. This makes Knights way more playable. Like, uh, like a 50% increase on the tier 4, right? So, or like on the force energy thing. So, really good change. Attack and will decrease from 1 second to 0.9 seconds. Pff, I'm not sure if TA needed a buff, but TA got buffed. Fine. Additional damage for every stack decreased once again. So, we had the previous nerf and then they nerfed Lion again. And they increased the cooldown. So, they were not done with. They were not done with uh, demons. I still think you can play demons, but it's definitely going to be a lot weaker, which I think is good. Death Prophet nerf, yes, fuck off. Death Prophet Wraith King nerf, yes, fuck off. Wraith King. These two units are still going to be really good, but they're not going to be a fucking broken menace anymore. So good, good nerfs to the undead deck here, or the, to the undead focus. Shadow Shaman attack and fall decreased. Uh, from 1.4 to 1.2. This is a buff in two ways. First of all, it's a buff to his attack. It's not, not a buff to his attack speed. It's a buff to his attack interval, which synergizes with attack speed. What I mean here is that someone with a lower attack interval benefits more from attack speed because it shortens their attack interval. So this is a double buff because it buffs not only his. As I said, it buffs its, its attack interval. But since attack interval synergizes with attack speed, I'm just repeating the same thing here. This means that the troll synergy for a Shadow Shaman now is even better than it used to be. Cool change, like maybe some Shadow Shaman core can be played. And then a Bane buff, decreasing the cooldown from 15, 12, 9 to 10, 8, 6. Again, we'll see if this is good enough, but this is a good change. And then the second part of this balance patch. Ascetic cap. Upgraded from tier 1 to tier 2. Fuck cap. And also, even more important, and this is something probably a lot of people are going to be curious about, only valid for chess pieces level 5 and under rather than 2 and under. What does this mean? So, I've talked about this before. I'm just going to walk through how levels work in DAC. Whenever you upgrade a unit from a 1 star to a 2 star or 2 star to a 3 star, the unit gains two levels. The original level of the unit is the amount of gold it costs. So if you buy a Slark, he will be one gold. If you buy Enchantress, sorry, he will be level one. If you buy Enchantress, level one. If you buy Lone Druid, uh, level four, because it costs four gold. Okay. You make Slark, Slark three, with Slark three star. He will be level five because he'll gain two levels for every star tier. This is true for every unit in the game, except. Druids gain two levels, then one. So Enchantress grows from level one to level three to level four. Lone Druid goes from level four to level six to level seven. Okay, so Lone Druid three stars level seven. And also, Meepo only gets one level on the last upgrade as well. So Meepo goes from level three to level five to level six. 
this is to counter uh, Akira stuff. Um, and I guess maybe shamans. So what does this mean, this change? This means that you can no longer put cap on four cost two star pieces. That is crazy. You can no longer cap Londra two star. You can no longer cap Snapfire two star, Chen two star, Monkey King two star. That means you can no longer get Wraith King two star, Nyx two star, or Death Prophet two star from cap. Beautiful change because fuck under the key. And under the key, was specifically broken because of how easy it was to just roll new four cost pieces into the uh, Akira grinder. This also means that you can't get uh, a free Spectre 2 star from like Elder Titan. That's probably honestly a good change. So a very, very, very cool change. This does mean that you can make like, you can make like Enchantress 3 star into a Clink's 3 star, or some shit like that. Which is pretty funny. But I don't know if we're going to see that, but that's pretty funny. So, great cap. Cap changed. Fuck under the key. Game is good again. They changed this Blink Dagger. So I'm, but I'll, I'll read it. Blink Dagger, start cooldown immediately when I acquire in the battle. They, they, there's been a lot of change to Blink Dagger, so I'll come back to this later on. Remove tier 1 item Veil of Discord. Good, no one never used Veil. This is a nerf to Shaman, though, but. Yeah. Hand of Midas downgraded from tier one from tier two to tier one. Good change. I'll cover this again, but they changed Midas further up the patch. Six elf and nine elf nerf. Chance for evasion decreased from forty five percent to forty percent. Remember that a six elf nerf also nerfs nine elf. Uh, illusion adjustment cooldown from th from three to four seconds and duration from six to five seconds. So a double nerf on nine elf. This is good. Nine elf should still be pretty strong, honestly. These are good changes, also along with the previous nerf. Really happy that did this. Like this build was too strong, so good that they're nerfing it. Drain eye ner blessing of narrow two and four uh, cooldown increased from four to five seconds. This nerfs the uh, yeah the synergies of drain eye. Whether it's a huge enough nerf, I'm unsure, but it's a good step, like nerfing drain eye a little bit. And then a troll buff. Uh, this is basically just. This is basically just a buff. Attack speed increased from 15% uh, 15 and 45% to 20% and 50%. This means that rather than getting 60% increased attack speed on with 4 trolls, you now get 70% increased attack speed with 4 trolls. And also, you gain there's less stacks, but you gain more attack speed per stack, and you have a slightly bigger uh, maximum attack speed potential increase from 6 trolls. Good buffs to 6 trolls. Like I seriously wonder sometimes if they watch my stream, because they're doing a lot of the changes I want now, and also this is a buff to Luna Trolls, and it's a buff to Juggernaut Trolls, and this is a buff to Hunter Terror Blade, and yeah, cool shit. This was the per first uh, set of changes, good changes. Now, another patch was released yesterday, and I'll walk through those changes. This doesn't matter, this is just undead changes. Blink Dagger. So, when you equip Blink Dagger in the battle, this means that your opponents have spawned on their side of your board. If you put the Blink Dagger on a unit, it will now start on a 5 second cooldown. This means that you can no longer blink. You can no longer blink a Tinker away if he gets jumped by Assassins. Well, you need to have the Blink Dagger already equipped. And you can no longer like blink someone out of Smoke Cloud or shit like that. I'm not sure how much I like this change because I did like being able to use Blink Dagger, but Blink Dagger's a lot weaker now. You guys probably saw me always pick Blink Dagger, like over almost any other item in the game. And I'm not sure I'm, I'm going to keep doing that. Like, I'm not sure it makes sense to pick Blink Dagger anymore. But um, yeah. With that being said, they did reverse. Uh, the distance change, which means that Blink Dagger once again is good on like Gyrocopter because we tried to play Gyrocopter with the 600 range and that was really tough. So I'm happy they reverted the distance change, but I'm still a little bit sad about this cooldown, but we'll have to play around it. Also, they removed the mana so it's worse on stuff like Tinker and shit. Um, you can do Blink Dagger with priests now. I feel like when you 
I, I was checking a VOD yesterday, and I feel like when you you want your Oracle to blink on 27 or 28, if I remember correctly, you probably you need to drop your blink dagger on the Oracle on 32 or 33. We'll have to test this out, but that should be how we need to play Priest now. Hand of Midas was reworked. Remember they made Hand of Midas tier 1 unit. Now targets non-permanent chess pieces, including all summoned pieces and illusions instead of neutral pieces, grant fixed one gold. And from what I understand, it doesn't work on neutral creeps, creeps anymore, which is a bit of a shame, but because there was a lot of play with neutral creeps to like eke out extra gold. But it works on all summons, on illusions, on manta. It should work on shamans, honestly. It should work on shamans, and it should work on Akia, and it should work on Meepo. <laughs> so maybe we're going to see some weird... Uh, I'm playing against the Meepo SF player, and I need to roll for Midas things. Yeah. <laughs> and now it drops a fixed one gold. Okay, so that is also... Yeah, so... I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about Midas, but... Yeah. You lose a lot of gold not being able to put, play it in creep rounds, but I guess that's how it is. Four Elementals nerf, which decreased from 4 to 3 seconds. Fine, Four Elementals was really strong. This is a buff to Sin Elementals, which might sound weird because Sin Elementals plays Elementals, but it's a buff to them because you don't have to worry about playing against Elementals anymore. Like, this is good for Sin builds and Hunter builds because they get really fucked by Elementals. Also, buff to Troll builds. Naka buff, 10% uh, more uh, absorption on Energy 4, that's 60% in total. And also the uh, radius of the explosion from 6 Naga was also buffed. These are good changes. Nerf to Dragons, nerf to Meepo SF. They've switched the Akia uh, nerfs back to 15 to 20 seconds. This is good because Akia already, like, under the, Akia was not the issue, under the Akia was the issue, so it's a good change. And then this is the same change that was in the previous patch with the 20 to 30%. All right. So, a lot of changes. How is the meta going to switch? I'll give you guys my read on the matter, but once again, I will. I, I want to release a video in a couple of weeks where I give a more up-to-date view on what we've actually seen in the high-ranking chess, chess China games, so you can get like a better feel of what has changed. But under the key has been nerfed a lot. Thank fucking god for that. Nine Elf has been nerfed a lot. Thank fucking god. Dina builds has been nerfed a lot. Thank fuck, and I'm not religious, sorry. Thank, uh, thank the heavens for that. And uh, la demon builds have been nerfed as well. And thank Gaben for that, maybe. Brodo. I'm really happy to see, see these changes because I feel like these builds have been way too strong for a long period of time. So nerfing them means that we can play different things. And it means that we're going to see more hunters and more assassins and more warriors, or are we? Because Goblin Draenei is still pretty strong. Mm. I mean, I guess we'll see what happens, but it should allow different builds to pop up. I think right now, the way the game is looking, Goblin Draenei is going to be sick. Meepo SF was close to untouched. There was a Ricky nerf, but also you can add Sator and Goblin Draenei now. And there was a bottle nerf, which is which does which does impact Meepo SF. But Meepo SF should be really good now. And I imagine that moving forward for the next coming weeks, the coming month, we're gonna see a lot of Meepo SF. We're gonna see a lot of Goblin Draenei because it's still really strong. Maybe there's some reason to play Trolls Knights, to play Troll Luna, to play like Knights reroll even. Maybe it's good now. Like both knights and trolls were buffed, so four knights, four trolls. Maybe it's okay. Yeah. Dragons, I think we're gonna see a lot of because there was a Ricky nerf, then there was a Naga buff, but dragons should still be like a reliable late game to go. Shamans uh, shamans should be in a better spot now. Maybe they're still not strong, but they should be in a much better spot. Arc Warden bots are gonna be strong. Sintorin Centaur bots are gonna be strong. Cool changes, honestly. Yeah. Like, I don't even know which items I'm going to recommend you guys to look for. Midas was nerfed as well, so 
do I really want Midas that much as a tier one since it doesn't work on neutral rounds? Like the neutral rounds were like four or five free gold you got bef like after 20, right? Whereas now you don't know, but I guess it working on elves and it working on summons and on Meepo and Akira and Shaman is actually pretty good. Maybe maybe Midas is something you should always get one off just like on the edge case that you might need it. I'm excited to play this new patch, honestly, and I'm excited for the new meta and the season starts uh, today. When I'm uh, recording right now, it starts in six hours. I'm really excited to try that out and I hope you guys are as well. I think for the next season, I'll try and push top 20 because I actually like the builds now, but I say that with the asterisk of knowing that I played too much China in the past couple of months and I think I've become more toxic, sorry, uh, to everyone. Um, but I think it's made me more toxic playing into the beta and trying so hard to rank up. In the past couple of weeks, I've just been playing more random games in Europe. And I think that's been a lot more fun for me and for most people on the stream and hopefully also on the YouTube side of things. Um, so while I really want to push top 20 next season, I want to add the asterisk that if I feel like it's bringing down my mood and bringing down the mood uh, I can give you guys, then it's not worth it. Like, top 20 doesn't matter. <laughs> Actually, nothing matters except kind of being good to other people and bringing happiness, right? So if I feel like I'm doing a worse job of that because I'm getting more frustrated with the game, then, then I'm being a fool for doing that, right? Uh, yeah. So. Sorry, guys, if you think I've. If, sorry, not if you think. Sorry, guys, that I have been toxic and complaining more and being. enjoying the game less, but I have been enjoying the game less. There's also some IRL things that has stuff to do with this, but still, that, that's not supposed to be an excuse. I'm sorry. Uh, and for the next season, uh, I do definitely want to improve both my play, but also my perception and my engagement with the game, because it is an amazing game. Um, and if I feel like the way I'm playing the game is detracting from my happiness and the happiness I can bring to you guys, then I'm going to stop play, playing for high rank and playing for uh, good, like playing for like the top queen placements. And then I'm just going to play random games and stuff. Just so you guys know what to expect. I just wanted to put that into the video. All right. I'll give you another update in a few weeks, I think. Stop by the stream if you haven't. I always enjoy saying hello to you guys. Uh, and I also enjoy your comments on YouTube. Uh, thank you for checking it out. I hope you're doing well in life in DAC. I hope you enjoy the new season. Stay kind. Uh, I'll see you guys around.